Williams into Wales. Wales through a goal. Slossy beyond Fodringer. And the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire derby. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Rotherham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box, Adolfi. He can hit them. And he does. Oh! Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. This is New York Talk, the Rotherham United podcast, and it's back to the league action. We're back talking about Rotherham United in the league as we try and bridge that gap to safety at Stoke City on Saturday afternoon. We will talk about that. We will talk about maybe ticket prices. That might come up. Um, we'll talk about some loans returning <laughs> to the Eric club. I'd love to talk to you about some transfers coming in and maybe some rumours, but it's very quiet. But maybe that's well, something to talk about. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Mick, are you primed and ready for this episode? Oh, I'm just trying to clear my throat. I'm, uh, I'm getting ready. <laughs> Already allergic to the, uh, the ticket prices. Correct. <laughs> uh, Tom, how are you doing, mate? Back with us. I'm good. I'm doing. I'm doing well. Doing well. <laughs> good to be with. You. Good to be back, everybody. Power my Dave Cowell, Martin Holland, Sarah Ogden, Kelly, Bob, Scott, Kent, Ruth Clark. Just a few people that are with us tonight. Thank you, everybody who is with us so far. Um, yeah, back to league action, which is good. We will come on to all that. Um, let's get out of the way. Let's let Mick have his moment, shall we? Because oh, um, there's any Leeds fans watching. Hi. Um, <laughs> ticket prices has, has come to the forefront this week. To be fair, when we played them in November, whenever it was, we knew this was coming. This wasn't a surprise. This wasn't. This isn't a shock. Uh, but obviously, Leeds United have um, <laughs> announced their ticket prices for the return fixture in February, and it's forty-five pounds. <laughs> forty-five pounds for an adult uh, to attend um, Leeds United versus Rotherham United, a second-tier game. Um, just to clarify, um, Mick, I'm not going to ask you a question. I'm just going to just go ahead. <laughs> floor is yours. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not. Uh, yeah, there's 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 all sorts of things you could say in it, and but I mean, the bottom line with this is that is what you've just said. Forty five pounds. Forty five pounds. Let that sink in. That Leeds United are not only charging away supporters forty five pounds. They're paying. They're, they're charging some home supporters. Forty-five pounds to watch a championship game, and yet we've got Rod- apparently Rotherham United supporters saying it's our fault. I find it honestly, it's like I've entered a parallel universe this week. Genuinely, it's just it's bizarre. It is absolutely bizarre, and and the fact that people buy this absolute garbage PR trick from Leeds United. Saying we don't want to rip off, we don't want clubs ripping off our own fans, our our fans, Leeds United fans, by charging them extortion amount of money to go to away games. That's our job. Let us do that. We'll charge, we'll rip our own fans off by charging them forty five quid to get a ticket. Don't, don't, you can't do it. Now nah, it's absolute garbage. And anybody, as far as I'm concerned, and this is obviously just my opinion, anybody who thinks that Rotherham United have a, a, a complicit in this in any way needs to give your head, head a wobble. We charge twenty seven quid. We charge twenty seven pounds, and a club that's whose owners are worth fifty nine billion dollars. A club that gets thirty five thousand, forty thousand spectators every week, who could fill the stadium twice over, probably, are dictating to us what we are allowed to charge their supporters. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Rodham and I were absolutely right. Stick to the guns and say no. We charge a reasonable price for our tickets. Why should we reduce it any further? Why should we lose 10 grand out of our turnover? 10 grand, by the way, that some of these people are saying it's Rodney United's fault. We'll we'll still want that 10 grand spending on players, on players' wages that don't exist anymore because we've just dropped ticket prices by two quid. Nah, mate, honestly, it's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing. The whole fallout of it, the whole the whole reciprocal pricing scam is just embarrassing as far as I'm concerned. Listen, if Leeds United fans want to pay 45 quid, knock yourselves out. Knock yourselves out. But forcing, trying to force other clubs 
into losing money. It's 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 embarrassing. It genuinely, it is embarrassing, and and to blame Rugby United for it, it is even more so as far as I'm concerned. It, sorry, but I just I just find it ridiculous. Anyway, there you go. We talked about the word reciprocal in in November, October, November times. So we're not going to go over the meaning of that again because we did go through that. But I think a few things are worth pointing out that are, are, are going, to, are going to pull are going to the. We we don't know how much Rotherham were asked to lower their ticket prices by, obviously, because that's an internal matter, as it as it should be. Um, but it's worth noting that we charged Leeds twenty seven quid, and apparently that wasn't good enough for Leeds United. That wasn't uh, suitable in terms of a reciprocal deal. It's worth pointing out that they agreed twenty eight pounds with Preston North End. That was an agreed figure between both clubs. So it's I don't I don't really get the difference really that. It's okay for Preston to charge them £28, but it's not okay for Rotherham to charge less. And then we have to follow them back up and have to pay £45. It doesn't really make any sense. Um, yeah, it's madness. I th- I'm right, Mick. I don't. The, the people. The, I, I, the, I also feel a little bit, a little bit upset with Rotherham because we could, the club could have bowed to pressure. And that means us as fans could have paid less. I understand that. What I do think is quite funny is that Leeds fans think it's okay to pay £45 to watch second-tier football. The, the people defending £45 to watch championship football, they, they're, somebody's going to pay £45 to watch Rotherham United. Just, just remember that, Leeds fans. Rotherham United you're paying to watch 45 quid for. Um, Tom, anything, it's, just, it's just crazy. It's, it's, I, can't, I can't believe it's a thing, this... Yeah, I'd like I'd like to up my turn to to Mick to uh, to, to rant some more. Uh, I'll have to take a step back for this. Ah, yeah, it's just it's. I mean, I think I've, everyone expected it, didn't they? So it doesn't come as as a shock, but it don't make it any less uh, impactful. It's just mm. it's just peculiar. Um, yeah, and fair play to anyone going, but likewise, mm. fair play if if not many people go. You know, it's an absurd price. Not to mention the whole day out, you know, for a lot of people will be will be a, a heavy amount. Um, yeah, absolutely no shame in whatever following happens. Mm, I, I, well, I can't believe it's people buying into this narrative that they're trying to look after Leeds United supporters. I can't get, I just genuinely can't get my head around it. I don't mm. understand it. I would love somebody to explain to me how that is looking after anybody other than the owners of Leeds United. Mm. I, I don't get it. Because it allow, what it does is, it allows them to charge 45 quid for the, their own supporters as well. Mm. It, it allows them to do that. So it, 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 anyway, whatever. whatever. I saw somebody on Twitter uh, the other day put that um, it's cheaper, it'd be cheaper to get a flight to Ireland and pay to watch I Follow than it would be to go to the actual stadium to watch it. <laughs> um, which is nice quite it's, it's a good idea. It's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Well, we'll all go, I will go for it. Well, yeah, I follow ticket evenly. I will all spend <laughs> it in Dublin watching the game. Can't <laughs> like great, yeah. Um, do some business as well. <laughs> uh, Paramount says £45 pounds to watch a regular championship game is a rip off, no, rip off, no matter what club it is. Uh, yeah, also, bear in mind, if they were in the Premier League, they wouldn't be, able to, they wouldn't be allowed to charge that. It would be capped at £30. Pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Just... But it's not a rip off, and it's not really the fault. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just honestly, it's just ridiculous. CJ says nobody should pay that, right? Um, CJ says you need to take out a mortgage for Leeds away for all the times. Um, Jack Jack Leeson says he was planning on going QPR and Leeds, but gonna have to choose one. They'll both, yeah, QPR will be the second highest, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're particularly expensive as well. Well, they should suffer Saturday, so you know, (laughs) two of the worst weigh ins in the the league are the most expensive. Mm. We, I don't. Anyway, we could spend an hour on this, couldn't we? Um, yeah. Kimmy was a single parent, sixty-five pound before he even left the house, and that, that obviously then you got to pay for bus and food and, tra- and everything else. And exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Forty-five uh, quid is only after after. Well, it's not even after the the battle, is it? In terms of in terms of a day out of football, you know, yeah. and, and generally parents taking the kids, so it's not forty-five quid, is it? It's sixty-five quid or, or or whatever it is. Um, but like I say, I mean, my, my main gripe is with Rodham fans just claiming that we're to blame for it. 
just honestly. It's not Stuart's fault. Blame him. Well, it's everybody's fault. And it's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I did say to a Leeds fan earlier that I quite like the idea of some fancy American guy ringing up Tony Stewart in October with this great idea. Yeah. And how Tony Stewart would have responded to that. I quite enjoyed the the, the imaginary story. Yeah. I mean, we, it, charge us two pound less on your tickets, but we'll have to have more stewards because half our fans will buy tickets to go into home end anyway. Which so we'll, you'll have to steward that as well. Um, and and so, so you're paying more out, getting less in, but it's all right because we're leads. <laughs> what? Go away, shove it. <laughs> and, and that's yeah. absolutely the right attitude. But, yes, but, but I think the, the massive takeaway from this is it has to be that a championship football club is paying is charging forty five pounds for tickets, mm. and nobody seems to be none of the none of the criticism of uh, uh, throughout social media really seems to be focusing on that fact. It's it's, it's I mean it's it, Dick Turpin wore a mask, didn't he? These are <laughs> I mean unbelievable, absolutely amazing. Um, this over the next three weeks, this may get brought back up. To be honest with you, we'll have to wait. And see. Uh, I, I imagine that social media will be will be alive with it on the run up to the game as well. Mm. Um, and and you know Tony Stewart and and Paul Douglas and and everybody else at the club will be getting pelters again because we didn't drop the price by two quid. We weren't because they stood up to being bullied. There you go. There you go. Um, Paul Davis are reporting that a lot of, lot of uh, coaches, coaching companies have cancelled their coaches because lack of interest. Again, understandable. There'll be, there'll be a couple hundred there probably, uh, assuming the price is staying in place. So it is what it is. Mm. It is what it is. There's many other to topics and comments we could say on that, but we'll leave it for now uh, and we'll probably come back to it at a later date. Let us talk about transfer business and the only business this week has been outgoings, um, mm. loan recalls. Two, Dexter, Dexter Lumikisa and Fred Onyedimna are done in Rotherham shirts. Probably two varying reasons, to be honest with you. Um, Tom, let's talk about Dexter first. I was surprised he didn't get recalled on day one, to be honest with you. I think it's quite helpful they let us get the FA Cup game out of the way. Um, Barry Mancuso wasn't available. Um, mm. Right time, I th I, he, he struggled, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So we've been saying for quite a while he needs to take out the limelight for a minute, and I think that this is the best case, yeah, best case for him, to be honest with you. Yeah, there's there's a player there's a player in there, but it's not quite ready yet. He's mm. a lot better going forward than he is defending, to say the least. He's a seems like a great guy. Um, when he first started out, he was full of confidence. He could handle himself wellish in one on one situations defensively. He could go forward with real threat, um, both footed. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's a, it was about confidence in the end, and he had none. And as soon as you have no confidence in a relegation scrap, um, that's when you need some real steel. And mm. being your first loan in men's football, is you're not going to... I don't think anyone can blame him for not performing well. I think, like you said, he just needed to go out of the limelight. But ultimately, he cost us points. And that's the hard truth of it is that he did. He'll learn from that personally, but as a team, we can't keep him um, in the squad. We've we've brought back PK for those reasons that he's just a lot more defensively sound. Um, so yeah, I, I just think I think it's a straight swap PK for Dexter, um, and I think it's an upgrade defensively more than anything. And I think going forward, it's it's it is what it is. And I um. Yeah, I, I wish him. I think he'll he'll do a, he'll do a Norton coffee. He'll he'll go on and and play for a better team, quote unquote, better team in the championship this season. Maybe more football based side and possession based whatnot, and maybe play decent couple minutes or go to a League One side and really and really shine there. But no, nah, he's he's not ready for uh, he's not ready for the championship yet. I don't think. But there was definitely a player there. Uh, mm -hmm. Just needs his defensive frailties sharpened up or at least played in a wing back position because he cannot defend his back post which is which is a big issue for a lot of a lot of full backs i mean you, but you know you can put you juxtapose that with revan and he he really can defend the back post well on the left hand yeah. side so you know it's one of those where it's ta he's tactic he's defensively just not there mm. um Thomas obviously it was too much responsibility for him um i just think too much was asked of him mick i think tom's right in everything he said it was too much was asked of him 
And again, this comes back to recruitment in the summer. That I think the player, every player we brought in, you can say that's a good player, that's a good sign, and there's something there. Mm. But there's a but. Peltier, yeah. we needed Peltier to be fit more often, or we needed Kyoso, who shouldn't have gone out in the first place, to take the load off Dexter. Mm. When they when it did drop, it he needed taken out of the firing line, and that's that. I don't try to dig people up. That's Matt Taylor's made a mistake then. Um, and to be fair. Dexter will be better for this. This this is a good six months for Dexter because he's learned the hard way mm. how hard it is, and he will be a much better player in three or four years' time for this six months. But for us as a club, it's really, really hurt as not having sufficient backup in that position because he shouldn't have played maybe half of the games just because of his confidence levels. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've just about covered it all there, haven't you, with that? Um, you're absolutely right. He's been almost ever present this season uh, for a 19-year-old in his first full season as a professional. To be playing in the championship is a massive, massive ask. To be playing week in, week out. Um, I like him a lot. I really do. I, I rate him higher than I rated Norton Cuffey. I agree. Uh, personally. Yeah. Um, I think I think he's far better going forward, far more dangerous going forward. And he and he can... I, I, I'd slightly disagree with Tom. I think he can defend. I think his, his issue is... It's just his awareness, which which mm. will come with um, will, will come with experience and age, and he hasn't got that experience. You know, he's constantly getting dragged inside or too far inside, um, and he's, he's only his pace has been able to get him out of that sometimes. Um, so yeah, I, I wish him all the best, and I and I, we know he's going to have a good career. We know he's going to have a proper career because he is a he is a very very good player, um, or he will be once he develops. Uh, yeah. In two years' time, so and I agree with you, Matt. I think this 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 year will have kind of made a man of him, and I, I know that sounds a bit patronising, and it's not meant to. Um, you know, I think it, it, it will have grown up um, massively in terms of his sort of footballing intelligence, his footballing, um, you know, outlook. If you like, that's not the right word, but you, you know what I mean. He, he's he's just. He's had a hell of a lot of experience in a very short space of time, both good and bad, um, which would take some players, you know, three or four seasons to get. Mm. Um, so I, I think it's been, from my point of view, I think it's been good for him, for his development, and it's been good for us at times. And, and had had the previous management not made the mistake of sending Peter Kioso out, which which we said at the time was a mistake and we've continued to say since, mm. then... He would probably have spent the season here, got the same amount of experience, but over a longer period of time. So mm -hmm. us as a club would have got the benefit from it, and as would he. You know, as it turns out, he's gone back, and only he really, realistically, when you sort of look at the look at the balance sheet, only he realistically comes out of this in profit. We don't, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I mean, he's a good player. No doubt about it, and we'll see a lot more of, um, of, of Dexter and McKee. So there's no doubt about that. Um, possibly playing at a higher level as he gets older. Mm. Yeah, rumours, rumours, Tom, that he's going to the new clubs I've seen linked to Middlesbrough and Norwich. Um, mm. Middlesbrough's less light now because they've signed Luke Ayling from Leeds. So I think that probably fills the gap. Um, mm. After all the positive things we've said, Tom, it's it would be a surprise to me to see him go to somebody in this league higher up, to be honest with you. I think that would be too soon. For me, he goes to a Peterborough type in League One who's doing it really well. <laughs> Peter Darby, that kind of, well, that'd be funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, but that yeah. kind of club who are moving forward, trying to be progressive. Mm. And then, I don't know, that, that makes more sense to me than throwing him in into a team that's trying to get it playoffs. So even more pressure on his shoulders. Yeah, I'd agree with you, but I, I don't think Wolves are thinking like that. I think Wolves see him as a... Uh, a top end championship footballer as he stands now, which maybe he is with the right people around him. He looked a lot better when he had a bit more bit stability around him. Yeah. And yeah, I, I do agree with you, Mick. I, I think he could defend one on ones well. I think he's sh seen that against Jack Clark and mm. um, uh, a couple a couple other left wingers. I mean, Mav Mavididi didn't get much out of him. Ooh. You know, a, a couple really dangerous wingers didn't get much out of him one v one. But his positioning is was you know really really poor. It suggests a concentration issue then, because if you play when you're playing against the best players, you know you've got to be on it for ninety minutes. Hmm. You can't have a lapse. You, but then when you play against 
Norwich or Stoke or something like that, you mm. have time to switch off because they haven't got those individual players. And, and, and Blackburn, Blackburn's another example. Yeah. The games where they haven't got those top, top players where he was able to switch off, which then cost yeah. us goal. Yeah, right. agreed. And he struggled physically as well. Not, not mm. you know, legs, but he was. He, 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 he doesn't have a great body frame for... Yeah. Um, 1v1 jewels which pelts pelts does have so and and um pk to that extent you know mm. he he got bailed out by his pace but he didn't not enough um yeah. getting beaten he'd get beat in the air a, a bit too much and shrugged off the ball a bit too much but absolutely as a wing back you can see him doing good things i i, I don't know how norwich play i don't know how i mean in a in that borough team maybe he works a little bit better uh but like you said they just signed luke ailing so probably not I, but I, I agree i i can't see him go into a uh go into any championship side in a playoff position maybe maybe a stoke maybe i don't know but yeah agreed you definitely need some confidence in a in a lower league league one-esque club mm. Absolutely. Um, at least I said any 19 year old player would struggle with the amount of pressure we have to soak up defense. I would add in there defensively, it's just natural. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shelley says Dexter was clearly better with someone in front of him uh, in a five. He was exposed. Hopefully, PK back allows more of attacking and switch to a back four. Let's see. Let's wait and see. Um, Emma just wants to pop in and say positive news. We still have Victor. That's right. Mixed uh, advent calendar. Not advent, mm -hmm. Advent's a Christmas thing, isn't it? Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you know, the advent of a, another three or four months with Victor is number one, I guess. Yeah. yeah, still here. 11th of January is still here, so good news. And no rumors, no rumors at all. Soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's move on to the other loan situation. Shelley says we let Fred go back, go back to Luton, surprising given our lack of players. Injury must have been worse than we thought. There are a few things to look at in the Fred situation, Mick. Mm. Um, it it reads as if we've requested to send him back. Mm. Now, I don't know if that's true, but that's how everything comes across in our statement, Luton's statement, every article I've read about, for, for example, on Paul Davis. Mm. Um, thoughts on it, Mick? Because Fred is our only, has been our only real creative outlet. He has a serious defensive issue. He's, he, he's got massive question marks, but... Mm. It was the only player that you could give the ball and something might actually happen. And we and we looked at since he's been out. Yeah. Yeah. It, reading between the lines, it suggests that there's been either a fallout or an attitude issue from Fred. Whether that's right or not, nobody knows, obviously. But reading between the lines, that's that appears to be what it is. Whether he just didn't want to be here, whether he's whether he 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 is actually injured, whether he hasn't got the stomach for a relegation battle. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But then you would have thought that that last point, he's been at Luton uh, and has been in mm. that, you know, in this division previously. So maybe you don't want to go through it again. I, I don't know. I don't know. But what what seems to be the case is that, that Liam Richardson said, no, nah, enough's enough. Um, you know, you're on your way back. Um, and we'll we'll find somebody who, who I like, if you like. Um, it's so difficult, isn't it? Because he seems like he seems like a decent bloke. You know, he's played very very well when he has played. The most for the most part, but he did have a certainly at the back end of Matt Taylor's um, reign. He did have a habit of going missing mm. uh, periods of games. So whether that whether that sort of points towards some sort of attitude issue or not, I don't know. But um, if Liam Richardson thinks he, he's, he's not for us, then he's not for us, and we 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 replace him. Um, it does free it frees up another space in the in the squad, doesn't it? So yeah, um, yeah that's uh, that's a, that's definitely a wait and see. But I got like I said, we're we can only read between the lines, but. It, my my take on it was that Liam Richardson don't like him or doesn't want him. Doesn't like mm -hmm. him. It's not the right word. You know what I mean? Doesn't want him as part of the team. Uh, yeah, Scott Kent said, with Fred, if you read a Paul Davis tweet from a few weeks ago, Richardson said he's spoken to Fred about the effort he's putting in for recovery, guessing mm -hmm. he wasn't put in. Yeah, that's again, that's a reading between the lines kind of situation, mm -hmm. Tom. 
but we all read that quote or read that article at the time and thought, oh, hang on, <laughs> hang on a minute, there's something here. Uh, because Richardson does seem, I'm not saying Matt Tiller wasn't, but Liam Richardson seems the kind of guy who has just got standards. It's the, it's your punctuality, your ethic, that kind of thing. And reading mm -hmm. between the lines, it sounds like Fred's maybe fallen short on those standards a little bit. And if it's on loan, it's no surprise we're going to try and send him back. Yeah, yeah. It, it frees up another loan spot as well, which I think was in mm -hmm. the thinking. Um, yeah, it, it just, I, I, he was an exciting, tricky winger, but never really played how you'd hope he would i don't know he those first couple games he started off quite lively the blackburn game especially uh really direct really skillful but yeah his out of possession stuff was pretty poor and he didn't contribute enough to um actually goals and assists he got two goals two assists in 15 16 games ish um maybe less maybe more i don't know um which is fine. It's it's good. It's fine. But sounds like there's been off off the pitch stuff that's gone on. Maybe his injury is worse than we thought. And he'd, right. yeah, yeah. Well, he'd come back in March, and we've just thought sack it. We'll we'll send him back, and and we could just bring in someone else who's actually going to be fit. Um, it could be it could be one of many reasons. But I think I think the main reason is is that. Um, Richardson just thinks that he can do better, whether that's he wants a fitter player, whether that's because he wants uh, a, a different style of player, whatever it is, it's just it's going to start to be his team, um, which I, I know we said a lot about the previous management, that it's his team now, and and now it will be finally be um, this, that and the other. But, you, you know, you, you've always got to back the manager and when he has when he has his players is when you can see how he plays. Um, so, yeah, I just... I just I don't know. I'm not entirely upset with Fred leaving. Um, mm. He's out of contract at the end of the season anyway. If we really, really wanted him, mm. and we just thought that it was a um, that it was a, a matter of, of fitness, then we can we can go ahead and sign him in in September and have another injury prone player on our books, which is what we tend to do. <laughs> yeah, he's he's he's, yeah. he's a good player. He's he's exciting, tricky uh pacey to an extent you know he fits he fits he fits the bill in a lot of ways but i, I think i think we wanted a, a chio replacement and we didn't get it with him and no. i think uh yeah i think we might be looking for a bit more of a direct player who knows it's interesting that he's, if he's if he's um out of contract at loon at the end of the season and he's he's thinking we're going to go down mm. and he's going well, to be wanting to try and get himself another championship mm. Uh, mm next year uh in which case he wants to be playing higher up the championship so perhaps he's looking at getting a loan out somewhere else uh mm -hmm. within the championship from uh, from luton maybe that's yeah. his that's his thinking yeah. there, there could be so many reasons why he's been yeah. why we've we've asked to recall him but i think like i said i think the main one is just that he doesn't fit the plans because i think if he did we'd keep him and he doesn't so yeah. get rid of him get another loan in who's going to fit the style of play and crack on mm. Yeah, I should say Fred was better through the middle. He looked more dangerous. He did, he did at times, to be fair. Um, yeah, and we both. I'm not devastated. It'd be nice. It would have been nice if I had been kept him and his, and his own form, but you can never guarantee that form. And that's the yeah. problem with Fred. That's the big problem yeah. with Fred. You mm. can't guarantee that form, can you? Um, yeah, so that's the loan situation done with, I think, for now. Uh, we've got two more loans in Appiah and Revan, as Jack Leeson says. Um Appy has not gone back, Mick, and that's a concern to me because he's really? clearly not fancied. He's clearly not, he didn't want to play him. Otherwise, I don't think he started a game under Liam Richardson so far. And when he has come under Liam Richardson, he's not been very good. Uh, he had a, he had two or three good games under Matt Taylor, and we are talking two or three, only two or three mm. ga good games. Um, I'd keep Revan. I would definitely keep Revan. I like oh, Revan. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but. Right now, what's happy bringing to us? He can't play in a three-five-two. He's not defensively good enough to play in a three-five-two as a mm. wing back. You're not going to play him as a striker. Uh, I, I suspect we can't send Happy back to be honest with you. That's that's my guess. It depends what Liam Richardson's plans are, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Because Liam Richardson's currently hamstrung by the fact that we've got one fit centre half at the club. True. Um, so and he's he's had a struggle with a right back. Uh, because with the greatest respect to, to Pelt, you know, he's he's not going to give you three games a week, two games a week, yeah. consistently till the end of the season. 
So he's he's left in a situation Liam Richardson where he's got no choice but to to play three across the back, including a left back and a midfielder uh, mm. in that in that uh, in that role, which means there's no place for Appiah as a winger. Mm. He if he can get um, another centre half in, and Cam Humphrey's back, it might oh. then allow him to play a, a back four, and all of a sudden Appiah becomes. You know, yeah. a, a, a fixture within the team because he, he you know, he's, he's, he's able to play in a position that suits him. So maybe that's in his thinking. Maybe his thinking is he's going back. We just don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know he's he's he's, he, he's got a lot of criticism uh, as uh, as Appiah, and 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 there's, I, I think he's a quality player. He's just not. We've not been able to play him in a position where he can be, he can show his ability. Because he's, you know, he's too busy having to defend, which is not his bag at all. That's mm. not what he is. So maybe that's Liam Richardson's thinking. I don't know. I don't know what his sort of favoured formation is. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But he's certainly looking to strengthen that centre half position, and, and and rightly so, given the injuries and and lack of discipline, I guess, from uh, from the people that we've had in there. Um, so that, if if he's able to do that. Then for me, and he's going to play a back four. For me, happier stays. No, no question. Fair enough. Enough. The enough. enough. Very much. Go on, Tom. Go on, Tom. Sorry, I was just, the only question is: Do you reckon if we do, do you reckon we could get someone better? Well, that's the question. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, that's the only thing, isn't it? Is that if if you have a if you have a winger lined up for a loan from a prem club, do you say okay, off off you go? Mm. Um, because Difficult we want to know, yeah, and that's and that's why I don't think we'll know until the end of the transfer window. I think yeah. with with Richardson's comments, I don't think it's 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 tough to say. And I agree with you. I think we need him. I do. And I I think there's a play again. I think there is a player there. He's again. He's only twenty two or something. He's yeah. an eight an eight million pound man at one point. He is. He has got something, and that is <laughs> is the, is the be all and end all. He's he's quick and direct, um, but he hasn't shown it and. If he does go back, fair enough. But if he stays, and we do eventually need him as a winger, then you know I'll, I'll happily take him. But at the minute, we need numbers. We've just sent two loans back. If we send a third loan back, with not even being able to fill the bench, you know what? Yeah. What, yeah. what? What? What are we playing at? It's it's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's it. It sounds like we had no choice over Dexter. It sounded like he got recalled, and we just had to say suck it up and say all right. Um, with Fred, it sounded like we sent him back. So hopefully we've. We've got someone lined up to come in tomorrow because if we don't, then I don't know. It's um I mean not been playing anyway, though, Fred, has it? At the minute no, Fred's not yeah, lost true. from the current squad. True. Sort of, I mean, if you look if you squint true. just right. Yeah. Not <laughs> <in it. laughs> yeah, true. But I, I just think I think with the injuries, I think we need to keep happy no matter what. Mm. I think he could I think he could not play a single minute again for the rest of the season, but we just need him. Mm. Uh we need numbers to fill the bench. And unless you have someone to replace him, then you, you can't you can't do much. I think I think Richardson is in such a tough position because everyone's saying, "Oh, get rid of him, get rid of him." Hall, Ayala, they're they're, they're too injury prone. This, that, and the other. But as soon as they come back, then they're more. We've got, it's more players that we've got. You can't get rid of a player and guarantee another one come in. We can get rid of Hall. Yeah, we can get rid of Hall and not bring in anyone, and then we've got one mm. less player in the entire squad rather than, mm. and yeah, you can say bring in Bowler or this, that, and the other, but you know, you you want to fill it with quality and championship quality at that, and it's a, it's a tough it's a tough thing, and I think I think the fact that we're really quiet and no rumours are being spread by you no know, Tom Dick or Ari is pretty it's pretty good going in my opinion. I, I think it proves that we're actually getting stuff done behind closed doors. Mm. I think you're probably right. Um, Harry says, but I'm, I'm happy. Maybe we can't send him back. Maybe the parent for wanting to stay here. Uh, Mark Gamble says, Darth Reverend needs to stay. He's just sent happy back first class recorded delivery. Um, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, yeah, that really says, you know, Paul Davis says he wants up to five. Needs to get cracking soon, rather. There's been no pre match presser yet. Well, um, that's yeah, that's that's the thing. If we announce someone tomorrow, that's one of the five done, and then we've got another yeah. th three loans. So hypothetically, you know, we can bring in loans at any time after Premier League. Two more loans. We've well, got two in there, we got five. We can well, we've we've only got we've only got Revan and so we've got three yeah. more loans. Yeah, three more loans. Well, yeah, so yeah, yeah, including if we get one in tomorrow, then there's yeah. two more. Right? Yeah, 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm assuming it's I don't know why, but I assumed it was permanent tomorrow. Anyway, so we've got another three loans to come in, and that's five. And then if one comes in tomorrow, then we've got another four to bring in. A, you know, it's mm. just it, when you think about it, like like this. If if we get someone in tomorrow, then it kind of all all evens itself out. You know, it's, I don't you can't you can't imagine we're going to be twiddling our thumbs and think and negotiating over a grand here and a grand there and you know ten mm. grand transfer fee. You know, we're going to be on it and. If we're not, then we deserve to go down. But I, I can't. Uh, Richardson doesn't strike me as the type to take any kind of, you know, he's he's, he's not gonna he's not gonna take anything really. He's gonna get it in and get it sorted. He said mm. he said that when he joined, he instantly thought of his transfer processes. So, mm. you know, we'll think about it. It's all ifs and buts at the minute, but <laughs> yeah. we'll see. Absolutely, Mick. We are eleven days into the window, no incomings. Um, so it's time for people to get upset about it. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which I've seen a few people start getting restless. There's a f- we said mentioned last episode. We've, it's now a three game month with one of those games or mm-hmm. league game. One of those games already been done. You've only got to get through two more games, and then then the, then you've got a free window. So it, it, it's a good thing that we only have those only have those those games because of the situation we're in. And as we I feel like we say this every single transfer window. Just remember where we are in the food chain. We're we're one of the bottom teams in this food chain. We've got to wait for all the other sharks to feed, and then once they've done, we then have to take what's left. That's our position in the league for ninety-five percent of the transfers. Um, copy and paste from from August, really, Mickey. Do you, do you agree that that's the case, or do you think we should be somebody should have been in by now? Oh, we should have had we should have had five or six in by now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it is literally copy and paste from every other transfer winner, isn't it? You know. It, it just seems that's the, not the normal state of affairs now, and it transfer window opens. Some people put sarcastic texts out after, after about an hour saying we haven't signed anybody yet. Everybody laughs at it. Two days later, people start putting serious texts out that we had uh, messages, uh, tweets out, uh, posts out, whatever on social media, actually serious that we aren't, and then so on. And it goes on for the next 28 days till end of transfer window when we've either signed enough, like we did in summer, and we were all happy. Um, or we haven't signed enough, and everybody's screaming and shouting that Tony Stewart's useless and Paul Douglas should be sacked and Rob Scott's not done this and so on and so forth. So it's just rinse and repeat, isn't it, every transfer window? Um, and, and you know, we said this halfway through the summer, I'm sure everything's being done behind the scenes to get as many in as possible, and it was. It, as it's turned out, it wasn't that successful, given all the injuries that we've had. Um but nevertheless, it was a good transfer window, pretty much. Um, we'll have to wait and see at the end of January what well, this one turns out to be. We might end up with no more players in. Mm. Not at all. It's possible. Uh, we might end up with five or six. Or somewhere in between. I'm going somewhere in between. So Yeah. We've also got to put it in perspective as well. Like who who have okay, I've seen Wednesday sign one play for one player today. Right. Um, they're linked with Connor Coventry, who we had last January. Plymouth have signed Ashley Phillips or someone, and lost about three players. Yeah, lost lost um, all their loans. Um, mm. well, as as and and Kundal and uh, QPR, I don't think have signed anyone. You know, put it in perspective mm. and you just think, you know, yeah, we haven't signed anyone, but uh, you know, nobody else has either, and. It's, I, I'd only be worried if everyone around us were bringing in reinforcements and not just reinforcements, but good, you know, mm. good players. Ash, Ashley yeah. Phillips for Plymouth, I think, is a, re- a really good sign. And I was a bit gutted when I saw that because I think it's, I think he's a really good player, captain of the under England under 20s or something. You know, he's a really mm. good centre back, a good centre half that we could have used. But, you know, it's it, not dwell on other teams and their transfer windows. But, you know, if you think, if you think about who anyone has signed in the Championship, it's not. It's not. It's not an active window at the minute. Um, no. January yeah. normally takes a while to get going. It's on, you it very rare you see all business done in ten days, fifteen days. It's the last yeah. two weeks that are massive, really. Yeah. Mm. No. Exactly. And and even think about prem clubs. I know that it's, it doesn't matter, but who who is? I, I can't think of one player that has gone for anything yet. Just saw Coventry have signed one player who I've never heard of, and it's like mm. these might turn out to be brilliant players, but tra- the January transfer window is really underwhelming until the last two weeks like you said and i think i think if it gets to what what are we on now the 11th if it gets to the if it gets to the 20th and we've still not signed anyone then that's when you can properly go right what the hell is going on here 
um because even then you've got 10 days or 11 mm -hmm. days until you're uh until it's all done with so i don't know i'm not too i'm not stressed i mean i, th I just think people like the apprehension and like the oh we signed this player and this player i think people are just trying to get excited um but per i don't think there's anything to stress about at the minute not until uh, we've only got because we've only got three games this this month. Mm. It it does not, you know, it does it does not matter until um, until the last ten days. Mm. I completely agree. Uh, Scott Kent says, "Yeah, we said we needed more firepower, which is interesting. Mm. Um, could mean movement out, movement for Hugo and Eves because we're going to move on by out of it, um, and maybe Georgie as well. If if he wants more firepower, somebody's going to have to make way out of that out of that four, which is going to be quite interesting." Um, we'll see what happens. We may make a signing before the game Saturday. We may not. Let's wait and see. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's talk about the Stoke game. Um, let's start with Mick's favorite bit of the show referee watch. <laughs> uh, if anybody's not seen the tweets that we put out on the week, I am very, very sorry to ruin your afternoon slash morning whenever you're listening to this. Uh, for the first time this season, we have our old mate Keith. Keith Stroud is the referee for Saturday afternoon. To be fair, We've done really, really well to last until the 13th of January to, to not have him. So that's a positive, I think. Um, Mick, are you buzzing to see your mate again on Saturday? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. And it's really, really difficult not to be incredibly pessimistic about the fact that he's officiating another one of our games, in it? You know, it, it really is. So... Well, uh, let's wait and see which, which one turns up. Uh, you know, he's got two very unfashionable teams, the referee. Um, so I assume he will have to hang his hat on the fact that Stoke used to be in Premier League. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know what, I don't know. Uh, you never know what to expect. Well, you do know what, exactly what to expect from him, don't you? I don't know why I said that. Look at me. Uh, Look at me. I'm Keith, me. That's what he's yeah. saying. It, it, I am I am anticipating the usual car crash of a of a game from him. Um mm -hmm. that's what we always get, it seems. I can't think off the top of my head of a single game that he's he's officiated for us um when he's not been booed off, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't genuine I mean it doesn't happen that often. You know, referees get shouted at for this decision that decision it's very it's not very often at all that referees get booed off the pitch and he consistently gets it so you know it, it, it not not every single club can possibly be wrong every single set of supporters can possibly be wrong can we but you know we've got it we've just got to do it haven't we we've got to get on with it so he uh, he last left us in the middlesbrough game last season the survival game uh when i think he got booed off by the entire stadium Yes. Uh, not just Rotherham fans. Yeah, that's um, right. He did, yeah. So, yeah. A united yeah. two sets of fans, which is nice, I suppose. Yeah, that's the that's the first time I've heard all four sides of the ground slating him <laughs> a referee. Mm. The first time. So uh, that, that's a that's an achievement for uh, for our Keith. Second time on Saturday. <laughs> you know, the bottom Doesn't line is it appears it appears mm. that he loves that kind of attention. He can, he seems to thrive off it and. Um, the, the more of that attention he gets, the worse his decision making becomes. Mm. He can be a very good referee. If you remember the Sheffield United game last year, other than like a 10 minute period before half time when we dinky Wiles and nailed on penalty, he had a yes. really, really good game. That is true, yeah. So uh, there is a good ref in there. There is definitely a good referee in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's still got potential, that, that kid. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is, though, Matt, there's a decent referee in all of us for 20 minutes at some True. stage yeah. if we're refereed for the next 20 years or however long he's been going. You know, Fair I'm much. sure all of us could get 20 minutes out of that period of time. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about back to Rotherham United. <laughs> um, Tom, somebody mentioned it earlier in the comments. Uh, Shelley says, it's gone now. Uh, Shelley says, is Dexter, Dexter's gone? Would you put Kyoso straight in? For me, it's a straightforward yeah. Kyoso yeah. start. Easy. Yeah, he's he's match fit. There's nothing. He's been training with the team for two weeks ish. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, even right right back, right wing back. I think he can do it both. I think he can even play right centre back if you asked him to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I 
absolutely would. I don't think anyone else fits the bill better. Do you think it would it be a three or four, Tom? Do you reckon? Oh, Christ. Um, <laughs> I think I think it'll be a three because I think he will he'll want to play two centre back. Um, not centre, two strikers. Mm. I think it'll be. I think he'll he'll drop slash rest Bramall or injured or whatever. I think he won't risk it even if he is fit. Yeah. He'll play. Re- I think it'll be a Revan left wing back. I think he'll bring Peltier back. Uh, Morrison, Hacks, and PK, uh, and then the same. Oh no! Um, yeah, same five. Mm, yeah. Lucas, uh, Tiehi, Cafu. No, Rathbone. Uh, I don't know. And then Eve, Eves, and Eves, and non by play. Okay. Um, on case on Kyoto. In case you wanted a full rundown, I know you didn't ask. <laughs> me. Um. Mick, how big a game is this for Kyoso? Because, and that sounds stupid, that does sound stupid, but there's pressure on him, really. Because if he comes in and has an absolute stinker, bearing in mind we didn't see him too much last year, so we don't, although we had saw bits of him, we don't, we can't say, yeah, you were brilliant in this game, that game, and whatever. And if he comes in and has a bit of a stinker, there's always a worry that fan, some fans will sort of will get annoyed at that, that it was Peterborough, I think, is the dog's what it watches. It's, and he comes in and has a stinker for us. It, and, and that's fickle, but that's football. So it's, it's quite a big game for him. There's, there's a bit of pressure to perform, maybe. Or am I playing it up too much? I mean, the, the, the phrase that sprung to mind while you were while you were saying that was don't believe everything you read on the internet. And and for those people who believe everything they read on the internet, if he if he has a bad game, then yeah, it'll be, it'll be because he wants to go back to Peterborough. You know, the reality of it is he's had less than two weeks training with his squad. Um, and whilst he might be match fit, he's not played with the squad since the summer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that might be a reason why, if he has a bad game, he might not and have it's a step game. up. Step it's up. a step up in quality. Absolutely mm-hmm. it is, yeah, without a doubt. So all those things will be t- all those things will be completely dismissed if he has a bad game, and it'll just be because he wants to go back to Peterborough, you know, <laughs> if you believe everything you read on the internet. So um, I, I don't. It's not a big game for him. No, it's just a game. You know, it's a it's a game. He first came back with his parent club, um, and and I'm sure as a professional, he'll be he'll be up for it, and he'll be he'll be he'll be putting in his best uh, best the best performances he's capable of under the mm-hmm. circumstances. So, no, I don't think it's a big game for him. No, uh, the bigger you get, the bigger you make it, the more pressure you put on players, don't don't you? You know, it's not no yeah. professional footballer and. Uh, and I'm sure he will be just that professional. Mm. Um, Shelley says guaranteed that before he's he, he kicked the ball Saturday, he'll be booed by some of our fans. Scott Kent says what? we need to get behind him, show him, yeah. show him he's wanted here. I, I, I think and hope Tom they'll get a decent reception. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they, but this is uncharted territory for us. We when was the last time we sent somebody out on loan who was brilliant who, was, who came back for us? This is a bit uncharted for us. Um, mm. But. I think he'll get a good, a decent enough reception, Tom. Um, and I, th- I, th- I, th- I like it. I do like him. I think he'll play play well and hopefully have a yeah. positive impact. Um, well, yeah, he's he's a, he's a good player. I don't see why he won't get good. Uh, a good, I don't know actually. Yeah, like you're saying, it's uncharted territory. He's um, clearly a good player. Um, he's been mistreated. I think it's fair to say. Um, and that's not to you know that's not slating anyone. And he may have said some things or um, done some things that probably he didn't do, and it's gotten under the fans' skin. But mm. clean slate. I think he'll 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 play, and he he always plays as a as a passionate player. You can see that from yeah. the Chef United win uh, at Bramall Lane, and when he plays played for Peterborough he's a passionate player I don't think he cares where he plays as long as he plays for you know with 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 friends for the fans he'll he'll, he'll play and he'll play well he's a good player um if he does get booed that'd be an absolute shame and an absolute embarrassment from every single one of them that boos but you can't stop them from doing it um <laughs> over some silly tweets um some silly blocks I don't know what the hell they'd boo at um yeah I'd yeah, all the all the best to him. I think I think 
he has a good game or a bad game, it won't matter. He's our player and we're going to keep playing him because he's got the quality to be a, to be a really good right back in this league. Mm, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Chile says he got he blocked a few people on X, so that's possibly why I'm yeah. Yeah. If, you do, I'm if, you, if you got blocked by Peter Kuhl, so just keep quiet on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Improve you you if you've got blocked by Peter Kiyosu, you want to perhaps ask yourself why. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, just just a, just a bit of advice from an old man there, but you know, if something happens, there's usually a reason for it. <laughs> Hopefully, he has a belting game, and then we can all put this whole yeah, team yeah, yeah, yeah. on Saturday afternoon. Um, mm. Let's wait and see. Um, Mick Tom's mentioned his midfield there. Midfield is the next question, really, because mm. Bramall's touch and go. If Bramall's fit, he plays. If Bramall's not fit, he doesn't. I think. But we all know, we all kind of know that situation. Mm. Midfield three last week started as Klukas, Lindsay, and Cafu, mm. which for me, you can't start that three again. Um, you can, obviously. With Tihi on the bench, you can't not start Tihi. Yeah. You've got to bring Tihi in. So yeah. the question is for who does T replace and do you bring Rathbone back in? Yeah, I mean, it, that, that's the question, and we'll have to wait and see on that. Tihi comes back without a doubt. Uh, no, no question for me. Um, and then Sam Klukas, I don't think you can. I don't think you can rest him. Depends on his injury situation, obviously. Uh, but the last couple of games, he's been absolutely awesome. So for those, for me, those two are an absolute nailed on. Oh, sorry, uh, T and who? Oh, sorry, and, and Klukas, Sam Klukas. Uh, so the next one is who, who, who else? Who goes in there? Is it Capo? Um, is it is it Rathbone? Is it Lindsay? Um, and, and any one of those three, I don't have a problem in necessarily. Um, I, I would argue possibly with Cafu, we're still at a stage where we're wanting to be, um, we're wanting to make him want to play. So maybe he, uh, he comes on, maybe he sits on the bench and realises that, um, you know, he's, he's not an automatic starter. Um, and because he always seems to play better mm. and, and he's more involved in the game when uh, when that's the case but you know what he can bring he can bring that moment of magic so um i personally would probably start him okay. having said all what i've just said there um i'd, I'd probably start tie Lucas and and, and Cathal in there uh mm. when you look at those three in terms of the amount of the, the 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 quality of those mm. three players on their day it's just absolutely awesome so um and then you can bring ollie or Linz and or uh, Lindsay on a little bit later in the game to uh, start kicking a few ankles. Mm. Yeah, true. Shelley says he thinks Ollie Klukas T or has to be all day long. He says it's Klukas or Club, which is which is interesting. Yeah, yeah um, of course, to see yeah. him having an impact. Um, Ollie's been bang off it recently. Bang off it. Well, he's been off it, Tom. There's no two two ways about it. Ollie's been well off it recently. Mm -hmm. um, this time last year, it'd be unthinkable to even having a conversation whether whether Rathlin should be starting or not. It, it, it was just the first name on the team sheet. But since Matt yeah. Taylor's left, all his, all his performances have dropped significantly. Yeah. Uh, he didn't particularly help himself last Friday against Fulham with a couple of moments where he, where he sh should have done what looked like obvious things and what 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 for Ollie seemed to be bread and butter normally. He, he, mm -hmm. he wasn't doing them. Um, yeah. But he's that kind of player that could just switch it back on and then he's back. Yeah. So it's frustrating. It's it's, a, it's an imp almost an impossible thing for Lewisham to pick, really, because if he picks him and he's rubbish, then he shouldn't have done it. But if he doesn't pick him and he comes on as a storm in twenty minutes, then he should have played with him start. Um, what's your midfield three looking like? I drop Rathbone. I think his touch is not there at the minute. I think he's run himself into the ground. I think his injury is a case of overrunning himself, and I think he needs a break. I think he's, I think he runs a lot. Perfect, fine. Do do off the ball stuff, which is which is brilliant. Which uh, m most of the other midfielders cannot do. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But when we get on the ball, because we defend so deep and we have so little possession, we need to be careful with the ball. We need to be more composed with the ball. We need to just be cleverer uh, with the ball. Um. And I, I just think Calf gives us that that Ollie doesn't. He's he's a he's a lot more careful with the ball. I mean, he he, he plays forward passes. He he recycles well. He's you know he just seems like a like a better fit at the minute. And that's not to say that Ollie won't come back in and storm it. He probably will have a 
fantastic game on Saturday and start and score two and get three assists and all this. <laughs> and then, you know, but I, I, I think he's been asked to play a role which he's never done before in that he, he's been asked to play almost behind the strikers kind of role mm -hmm. and picking the, and his, his, his off the ball running is fantastic. His movement, his, um, harrying of players, his, um, is, is great. It is, is great. And he has moments where he's got, I know he hit the bar against Blackburn, but again, mm. that Blackburn game was just another case of you give the ball to Wally and he'll lose it. And we can't have that when we have so little possession and we, we defend really deep. We need to have players like the likes of Sam Klukas and, and Calf who keep the ball. They just, they just know, they just keep the ball closer to them, keep it, keep it ticking over. And it's the same with, same with Thierry. And it's just, um, yeah, we're asking him to do a creative job, which he can't do, um, and it's a shame. Um, we we don't have that right balance yet, um, and honestly, I I think that's one of the the key areas where we need to bring in a a player. We need creative players in this team, and we're asking mm -hmm. players like Ollie Rathbone to be creative when he's never really been creative. He's been when you look back at that League One midfield and it was Barlasa, Wiles and Rathbone, he was the least creative out of all three of them when he was um when they were in there. You know, Barlasa obviously being the prime example of a creative player. Wiles was a goal the goal scorer from them three and Rathbone did the dirty work and now he's being asked to if if we would have kept that same dynamic the whole way through, then we might see a different Ollie, but uh and we might see a different Ollie again if if we do go back to that. Um dynamic but right now i just don't think it works i don't i think his touch just isn't there it seems to bounce off him and and be a pass to nombe when it should be a you know close to close control into his into his feet and it'll, it'll, it'll be confidence like a lot of them but mm. it's uh yeah i think i think he needs a break more than anything maybe just a couple games where i know he didn't start blackburn he didn't start fulham but maybe another one another two just so he can regain his feet again, and then you start him, and then you'll you'll see a different Ollie Rathburn. Then it also takes time with the new manager. I think Matt Taylor. One thing Matt Taylor did very well was get certain players ticking, and he got Ollie Rathburn ticking like he was, Ollie Rathburn was better under Matt Taylor than he was under Paul Ward. Mm. So when then Matt Taylor leaves, he's got to learn to play under a manager. He's got to understand how what the manager wants and things such as that. So potentially that as well. Mm. Um, he's learned to play for a new manager as well. Uh, so, Palace is all yeah. gone. I was just going to say, safe to say that even if it's if if we bring in another centre back, I, I, I Hax is in that midfield. Lucas Tier he Hax, yeah. and that's without a doubt. I think that's our best midfield, but mm. we can't do that at the minute. Oh, you never know. You never know who comes in Friday. If we sign centre back Friday, Hax can play. Hax, Hax can then move in there, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Know. Yeah, we're um, getting lots of maybes again. Farwood <laughs> <laughs> says Oli used to run into those spaces with Barlas to pick him out. We lack creativity yeah. in midfield. And then you watch Barlas play like he did on against Chelsea. My like, God, yeah, he was oh. sick, though. <laughs> uh, way too good. Yeah. I, it makes you wonder how he was at us and up until mm. last year. And they got him for a million quid or whatever it was. Absolute yeah. robbery. Mm. Absolute robbery. Um, yeah. And Borough fans still don't particularly like him, I don't think, as well. Yeah, some they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right, a couple of bits to cover. Striking, sh striking partnership, Mick. Uh, last time. Last time was Eves and Hugel. That was mm. against Fulham. For me, you don't start Eves and Hugel again. And there'll be very few circumstances I would start Eves and Hugel again. Mm. Um, before Blackburn, it was Nombe and Hugel, who we mentioned last week. I think the week before, they're getting a really strong partnership together. But Eves has played two consecutive games, scored in one of them, yeah. and had a pretty good game, better than most against Fulham, to be honest with you, mm. when he played better than Hugel. So then, do you drop Eves? Do you drop Hugel? Do you actually do you just keep Nombe out for another minute? What what, what are you doing with the front two? Yeah, I, I would uh, bring Nombe back in. I would definitely bring Nombe back in because yeah. he offers something different yeah. to the two of them, uh, to to uh, Eves and Hugel. And I think they're very similar in their uh, the way that they play. Obviously, you know they're the two big target men, aren't they? Um, so yeah, I, I think I think for me, Hugo would would drop to the bench. He's far better when he comes on and having to prove himself. You know, he 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 just he has so much more of an impact on the game. 
Um, and, and I don't think he can drop Eves at the moment just because of the way he's playing and developing and sort of getting back into his stride. So, yeah, I'd, I'd have Nambi and Eves up there, I think. Um, that'd be my, probably be my choice. I think I could say to be honest with you, Tom, three three starts in a row for Tom Eves. I think it's, I think it's the first start in New York Stadium, I think. Yeah, his goal-to-game ratio is second best in the league. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you not play him? I, I, I don't <laughs> think he's done any... I mean, I didn't watch the game, but I've seen the clip of Hugo's offside goal, and that was a man mm. full of confidence from Eves to to bring the ball down, nutmeg his man and, and square it across to Hugo. It, it was... It was almost Harland esque now. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, it's he's 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 thriving off confidence. And why would you yeah. drop a man that's thriving off confidence? Absolutely, it's, yeah. It makes no it makes no sense. Same with Nombe. It's it's he was going Nombe was going through such a a tie a tough time. Gets a run of games going, and then and I know he got dropped for the Fulham game, but again, you can't. Right. Yeah, you you can't. Yeah, you can't not play players who are thriving off confidence especially mm. in when we lack it in so mm. many departments yeah. um hugel and georgie are fine they are not bad players but they have not got the confidence that them two do have and it's just it's it's n like simple really you play them to up top and if it doesn't work then you bring on georgie and, and hugel it's not mm. you know it's not the be all and end all if you start them too but absolutely them too mm. For me, right. you were really unanimous on that one. I like it. Well, well. Yeah. Shelley says, Give Georgia a run, him and Nombe. Why not? It's something different. Surely can't be any worse. But he also says, Eves hasn't done anything wrong either. So it's tough. Uh, Kelly's fourth choice at the minute, whether we like yeah. it or not. Kelly's fourth choice. Uh, he I is, yeah, he is, yeah. Having no well, inside info, but reading between the lines, if if Lucia wants more more firepower, I think we're lucky to see Georgia in a Rodham shirt post February, uh, post after January. Yeah. Um, well. You never know. I mean, if he stays come May, he'll uh, he'll get he'll get a, a cameo for the last ten minutes and go to the goal that keeps us in division. Won't he? That's Georgie Kelly. It's Georgie, yeah. You know, you know, he needs he needs to go out on loan. He does. Yes, he needs agreed. to go out on loan because he's fantastic in the box. He's a great finisher, head, left foot, right foot, whatever. He's a fantastic yeah. finisher. But outside the box, his game is really poor. He doesn't hold the ball up that well. He runs. He runs hard. Um, and he'll and he'll he'll not give defenders a minute, but he doesn't hold the ball up very well. He looks clunky when he's on it. He definitely needs just a bit of game time, um, and just a bit of bit of experience in League Two, in League One, wherever it is. A bit mm. of games, a bit of a run, and he'll score. He will score for whoever he goes to. Mm. He's got a hat for in League Two. If he goes to League Two, he'll score fifteen well, between the season. He'll yeah, score loads. Yeah. Pre season against Man Mansfield, and Mansfield yeah. were uh, are now second or third yeah. or whatever, yeah. and he scored three against them. And you just it, him in League Two would be would be a menace. And that's why if he gets a move to League One, League Two, he will score a, a, a lot. And fans will be saying, "Well, why didn't he play for us?" And all this, and it's because he's raw and. Paul mm. Warren said it. Matt Taylor said it. It's not a surprise that managers come in and say, "Look, he's got quality, but he's raw." And mm. that's the thing you don't give when you're in a relegation dogfight. He was. He's only ever played for us in the championship. I know he had ten minutes in League yeah. One, but he's only ever played for us in the championship. You don't play players that are quote unquote raw in the championship to try and give them a go. You 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 stick with what you know. You stick with your Hugh girls and your Tom Eves. You stick with the the consistent. Um, um, yeah, the, the kind of you know championship proven players, which is a shame for players like Georgie. But he needs to go out on loan, get some minutes. If he scores 10, 15, whatever, somehow, then obviously we're going to be kicking ourselves. But at the same time, it's perfect for him and it's perfect for us for when he comes back. If he goes out and scores one, doesn't play very well, then you kind of you've you've got your mind made up for you. I think I yeah. think alone is is perfect in this scenario because he's not going to get game time under Richardson. No, the best thing for him would be he'll just get relegated, and yeah. then he'll play in League One because Hugo will yeah. probably go, he will probably go, and George yeah. will still stick around. So, but let's yeah. hope that doesn't happen. But um, finish yeah. on a huge positive: Cam Humphreys is back out doing training. Everybody, that can only mean he's weeks away. I don't think he'll be in the squad on Saturday. We can all dream, um, but I don't think that he is going to be um, there. But 
that's huge news, Mick, for him to be back on grass in what appears to be full training gear, which you'd assume is is participating in essentially full training. That's a couple of weeks away. When that, when that happens, it's normally a couple couple of three weeks away. And with it being, again, short game month, that's huge. I mean, I don't dare to dream that he's actually full training, back in full training, but he's back out, he's on the grass. Um, his tweets are becoming less cryptic as well. <laughs> Those tweets, man. Those really tweets are just so funny. They absolutely make my day. I love them. I, I absolutely love them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 to get him back would just be, oh, I can't tell you. I can't tell you how, how fantastic that would feel. Um, it's, <laughs> he is. He's fantastic, fantastic footballer. So um, it would be massive, massive for us and our survival hopes, slim as they might be, uh, to, to have Cam Humphries back in that uh, in that back line. It'd be huge. It would. They don't want me to tweet. I lost myself with that one. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was peak. That it's, was like, it's like the storm before the calm. Oh my god! <laughs> the storm before the calm. Yeah. Um, don't yeah. change, Cam. Do not I change. Him. I love him. Let's finish on a prediction, uh, Mick. Two on Millers. Yes, of course. Uh, I, I'm going to get a, a, the the um, the league table up for uh, Abra Prediction League, and to tell you, <laughs> it's not great reading for anybody that's not me. <laughs> Um, to put in a good, oh, I still can't, uh, I can't find the way it is now. Right, I did it up. Uh, second place is Joy. But <laughs> 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 about five predictions in, but she's second place in the in the league. Oh, um, I'm top with I think 15 points. Joy's got I think six points. So the, the how the point system works: if you get a correct score, it's three points. Because that correct result is that right? One point. I have no idea. I've never done correct results. So I don't know. You have. You've got one. But- me and Mick are playing with our hearts, not our heads. Um, right. yeah, not our heads, Matt. It's the same, you know. Yeah, you're just playing with your head. It's it's not a game, you know. It's a, it's not a game. This is a way of life. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You 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 don't know where you are in the league, Tom, but you are you're playing your cards correctly based on your position. Am I bottom? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think you joined yes. the bottom. Uh, where am I? <laughs> Here we go. Hang on. You have to wait. You have to wait now for this. No attention. Can you feel the tension building? No. So I'm top with 16 points. I'm Joy top second with... with five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're just playing to win. What does the winner get? Respect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Mick, you are third with five points also, but you've predicted more games. Danny also has five. Has predicted the games. Tom, you've only predicted this will be your sixth prediction. Okay. You're on zero points, mate. Yeah, no, I'll take it every day. <laughs> but on points per game, Joy is storming away with that, to be honest with really. yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. So make two one again. Yeah. Uh, Tom, what is the gonna prediction be? Your first your first three points of the season, Tom. What's the score gonna be? Um is it it's at home, right? Yes, thankfully. Two one. Two one as well. Yeah. Okay. I will go just a draw. I'll go two two. See what? The, what's the fun? There's no fun in that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's the whole. Re- I've never predicted us to not win. Therefore, I'm on zero points. I mean, it's not really my fault, is it? <laughs> <laughs> or do I come on and say, yeah, I think we're going to get battered three nil. Anyway, give me my five points on the leaderboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for the win. I'm going for the win. Uh, the league win. Um, Chris Tether says 3 1. Harry says 2 1. Jack Leeson says 2 2. Palmaz says 1 0. Stroke a pen in the 90th minute for nothing, and a player is sent off for Sky. Stoke oh, Stoke in. pen. 1 0. Stoke pen in the 90th minute. Sorry, apologies. I've rather misread that. So you think Stoke, yeah. yeah. Keith's going to give him a penalty in the 90th minute, and the guy plays sent off for nothing. Got you. With your Palmaz. Yeah. For Sky, that. yeah. Um, Martin Holland <laughs> says 1 0 to us. Uh, CJ says 2 1. Kimmy Wood says a draw. Nick Leeson says we're going to lose 3 1. JC says 2 1 to the Millers. Phil says one point may not be enough. Not enough, may as well go for it. Big game, all big games. Um, let's hope we can bring that points gap down. Anything else, boys? We've gone long, longer than I thought, bear around. These, these shows are only quite short, these pre yeah. Tom's been going on all night. 
now. <laughs> this is, yes, I have. I have. I was I was trying to think in my head if the, if Mick Mick's rant lasted twenty minutes and it didn't at the start. No. So I was trying to find a way out, but I genuinely I think I have. <laughs> Anything else, boys? We want to quickly mention before we wrap it up. No, just God bless Cam Humphreys. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Keep him safe at all costs. Yeah. Um, make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you haven't done already. Uh, you, there is scout report is up from the Stoke uh, from every step along the way. Michael, maybe every step along the way, we have a chat about the uh, the first two games we played against them this season and the change of manager and everything else they've had this season. Uh, so that's a good, good 10, 15 minutes so for you to watch to get a bit more preview from the Stoke side. We will be back on Saturday evening, which will be the instant reaction. Uh, I've been worried for a minute there. I thought, yeah, I thought I was doing a podcast on Saturday night. No, <laughs> no, but the instant reaction will be up Saturday night, um, mm. which will be Mimic, hopefully Danny as well. Uh, I assume it's going to the game. So Mimic and Danny um, will be around. If you want to say hello, come and say hello. Um, make sure you've subscribed and like this video as well. If you're on YouTube, if you're on iTunes or Spotify, follow and or subscribe, depending on what where you're provider wants you to and give us a five star rating. loads of like 60 plus five star ratings on spotify um so thank you all for being on there if you haven't done already please put please, please give us a five star and only a five star don't give us a one or anything like that would be rude <laughs> uh that would ruin the score so please give us a five star rating if you haven't done already um and that's the full next review will be sunday obviously uh mick thank you very much for being with us tonight um for spending an hour and 12 minutes as it will be with us you're more than welcome Thank you very much. Tom, as always, mate, it's a pleasure, mate. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, it's been fun. Sorry for rambling, but, you know. Don't worry, Tom. Thank you all for being with us. Appreciate your time. We'll see you next time. And as always, up the Millers. Up, up the Millers. It's a wild, wild through a goal. Slossy beyond Fodringham. And the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby. Oh. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Rotherham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box for Duffy, he can hit them, and he does. Oh! Oh! Duffy oh, has man. scored an absolute screamer for Rotherham United. Rotherham United have secured their championship status for next season. Do me a favour, drop me off in Rotherham.